on Saturday and Tuesday and Wednesday and Thursday, there is an operation in my living that is demonstrating power. to be with you again and share another portion of God's word. And I pray and hope that God is doing his wonder working power in your life today. We are going to have a really, really powerful session because I believe it, it is one that virtually we need to be exposed to. Amen. Exposed to something that virtually we may have been completely unaware of, but we need to have an awakening and be aware of something that is accessible for you to possess right now. Not down the road, not you know some years from now, but right now we wanna deal with it. And it's called kingdom power, kingdom power. It's amazing that I have spent the majority of my life in ministry. And one of the things that I have recognized that I see a lot of folks that are operating without a lot of power. It's as if they seem to be functioning in a place that's de-energized. Okay. You know, the energizer bunny, he always comes and, and he kind of helps out something that seems like it's lacking energy. You know, some doll and fell over us upside down and he comes in and plugs in some batteries and voila, you know, the, 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 the whatever toy is ready to go, okay? It's almost like that to some degree as I watch my brothers and sisters seem to struggle and seem to struggle all the way and they look at Sunday as like, it's this place for me to get recharged. But I really want to emphasize to you that that's not what Sundays were really made for. The whole idea of worship is not about us. It's really about God. Our worship is to please him, not to please us. Oh, I know that's an awakening, but it really is. Worship is really about giving ourselves to God because he loves, the Bible says, the praises of his people. It's not really about us. It's really about him. Now, we may get some of the proceeds from it, and we may be blessed from being in that environment, but let's be real about it. Worship is designed to give the adoration and the attention and the glory to God. And that's what it's for. And so when we leave that place and we're all amped up, man, we're charged and we're good to go. But then we got the rest of the week to go on. And many people find themselves de-escalating in the power level. It's as if they had all, you know, the lines of power were really good. Now they only got one bar. And it's Saturday evening. And they're getting ready to go back into church again. And virtually do the same thing over and over again. Which is almost like a treadmill. And this is not the spiritual life that God wanted us to have. In fact, the Bible says in 1 Corinthians 4 and verse 20, and I'm reading from the New Living Translation, it says, for the kingdom of God is not a lot of talk. It is living by God's power. Think about that. The kingdom of God is not about talk. It's about living in God's power. That means outside of Sunday morning. Mm. That means on Saturday and Tuesday and Wednesday and Thursday, there is an operation in my living that is demonstrating power. And this power, this word power comes from the word dunamis. Dunamis is a word that when we translate it in the English, means dynamite, and that means that virtually wherever I go, I am bringing something that can change an environment. That's what dynamite does. They used dynamite back in the day to change landscape. They're going to put a railroad in a certain area, put a tunnel, 
through a mountain. It's to change the landscape. Do you realize that you have power in you that can change the landscape of your marriage, change the landscape of your job, change the landscape of your own mind, change the landscape of your future, change the landscape of your dreams and your aspirations? You have power in you, living power that is wanting to be delivered wherever you may go. I'm a firm believer that every believer needs to walk in a way that demonstrates power because you were given that power. In fact, the Bible even goes on to say in Luke 17, 20 and 21, the kingdom of God does not come with observation. Nor will they say, see here or see there, for indeed the kingdom of God is within you. This is not about a place, not about a location. This is about me. It's about me having power that virtually has been given to me to make changes all around me, including inside of me. Ladies and gentlemen, those of you who are struggling with emotional issues and you're trying to figure out where to go, you're calling people all the time, you're seeing if they're available to give you some kind of word of encouragement, and there's nothing wrong with that, but you need to realize you have power. God has given you access of power in you. The problem is we don't know how to access the power. We don't know how to tap into the power. We are totally unfamiliar with the power. The power is really uncharted territory. We have never dove into what it takes to really possess and live in the power of God. We've never done that. And this is why we need to realize that this power is accessible to anyone that has a relationship with God. I'm going to read another passage to you in Romans 14 and verse 17. And it says, the kingdom of God is not eating and drinking, okay, but righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Spirit. Now let's take a real time out. What is righteousness? Righteousness is living according to God's will. It's living according to God's standards. That's righteousness. Righteousness is allowing God to move me in the capacity that he created me for. That's righteousness. And that's according to his word. His word is built on righteousness. So every time that you agree with the word and you live the word, you are walking in righteousness. And every time that you walk in righteousness, you are walking in power. Did you know that? Righteousness is a power move. This is why the devil doesn't want to deal with anyone that's righteous. This is why your 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 haters and your enemies don't want to deal with you and they may avoid you and evade you because they don't want to deal with power because there is power in righteousness. You have to understand righteousness is a power move. And many people are really avoiding and evading power from righteousness because they're not in a place of righteousness. But notice it also said that the kingdom of God is a place of peace. Oh my God, it's a place of peace. When I'm in a place of peace, that means virtually I have the ability, peace means restoration, so I have the ability to restore some things. And let me tell you, one of the things that virtually I think we may have kind of overlooked is the restoration of ourselves. Amen. Again, we try to emphasize the importance of being real about you, the restoration of yourself. Amen. There is power that God has given you from his word, from his ways, from his ability to move not only around you, but to move in you, to cause you to deal with you. Amen. There's some of us who are so preoccupied in whatever occupation, job, and thing we have going on that we haven't taken some time out just to consider ourselves. Wow. 
we operate as if, man, I'm just trying to get through. I'm just trying to make it. I'm just trying to, you know, get, get, you know, do what I got to do. Uh, you might want to pause on that, take a time out and look at you. Where is the peace of God in you? Because you need it. Because if you're going to virtually be powerful to the world that's around you, don't you want to take advantage of the power that is in you? How can you make a difference in the world when you can't make a difference in yourself with the power that God has given you? And last but not least, he talks about joy. And joy is not the same as happiness. Joy is very different. It's a different experience all by itself because you can have joy in the midst of trials. You can have joy in the midst of suffering. You can have joy because joy is an inside job. And so we're going to stop on this note because I want to emphasize to you, where are you in kingdom power? Do you really have kingdom power? Can you see kingdom power in your life? Do you see it in your home? Do you see it in your marriage? Do you see it wherever you go? I pray that if you haven't seen it, you'll ask God to help you to expose it and have access to it and to know that it's available. We pray today that God will bless you and that you'll always know that you were born to be a blessing. Amen.